For better or worse, modern marketers have done such a good job associating certain images with their brands that consumers can't help but think of the brand name even if the product isn't there. If you see a big brown truck with sliding doors, your brain immediately goes to UPS. Or a box of facial tissues is much more often referred to as Kleenex than any other generic name. In the world of beer, if you see a bottle of beer with a juicy lime tucked in the neck on a sunny, sandy beach, your mind is probably trained to jump immediately to one brand, Corona. Hey, this is Ryan with Beer by the Numbers, and in this two-part video series, we're going to take a good, long look at Corona, a pretty simple brew that emerged from the crowded Pilsner market in Mexico to become one of the top-selling beer brands in the world and thanks to sharing its name with a certain virus, has become one of the top searched beers on the World Wide Web today. In this first video, we're gonna look at the nearly 100 year history of Corona and see how this clear bottled brew became an absolute juggernaut. Then in part two, we'll examine the impact of coronavirus on the brand and how it has become the biggest beer meme of 2020. So without any further ado, Grab yourself a lime and let's get started. Corona was first brewed in 1925, but the true beginning of this refreshing brew began in the mid 1800s. Across the sea, the last remnants of the Holy Roman Empire were falling and the German states were beginning the process of unification. Like almost all major political changes, riots and persecution were unfortunately too common, so many minorities throughout the German states decided to emigrate to the New World. The United States proved to be a really popular destination for Protestant Germans, but since many German states were persecuting their Catholic citizens, those immigrants wanted to avoid the majority Protestant US. Many of them found that Texas was a great landing spot, then still under the control of Catholic Mexico. If you think back to your history class, you probably know what happens next. Within a decade of most Germans arriving to Texas, the Mexican-American War broke out. And although this didn't create too much hardship for those German immigrants, it did mean that many Catholics had to pick up and move again to the southern states of Mexico that were more favorable for agriculture than in the north. Today, many of the southern states of Mexico have more people of German descent than of Spanish, which makes Germans a pretty sizable minority in southern Mexico. While most of these immigrants were farmers or laborers, there were some Catholic nobles and industrialists that found Mexico a more appealing place than the turbulent Germany. When they emigrated to Mexico, they didn't just bring their wealth with them, they also brought their thirst for beer. There are several stories of wealthy Germans bringing their favorite brewmasters with them to Mexico in order to establish breweries and give their fellow immigrants a taste of the strong beer culture that they left behind. By the late 1800s, Mexico had several breweries, churning out Pilsners and Vienna Lagers, which were all the rage for German drinkers at the time. Over the next few decades, the Mexican beer market slowly grew with local and regional breweries first focusing mostly on serving immigrants, but the refreshing lagers quickly gained a little popularity with native Mexicans as well. But as industrialization swept Mexico in the 1920s, a large new brewery was founded in Mexico City to serve the booming population there, Cerveceria Modelo. In 1925, the brewery opened and began producing a Mexican-style pilsner called Corona. Unlike many of its more traditional European cousins, this lager was distinctly Mexican, with less noble hop bitterness and slightly higher levels of carbonation. Corona could provide sufficient refreshment and respite from the hot, hot Mexican sun. But it wasn't just the taste of this beer that was uniquely Mexican, its marketing was a great distinguishing factor as well. While many Mexican breweries were comfortable with marketing focused on their German brewing heritage, Cerveceria Modelo positioned itself as a high quality alternative to a Mexican drink called pulque. Pulque is an indigenous alcoholic drink made from the fermented sap of the agave plant. And while there were many producers of pulque in Mexico, 
The traditional nature of the product meant the quality was inconsistent at best. And Corona's marketing not only boosted the beer brand's popularity, but is largely credited for the steady fall in pulque consumption over the coming decades. Another winning slogan was introduced in 1943. 20 million Mexicans can't be wrong. And Corona had officially cemented itself as Mexico's beer, completing their break from their German heritage in marketing. But while these slogans certainly made a great case for Mexicans to embrace the beer, two iconic images allowed it to become a global brand. From the beginning, Corona was put in clear glass bottles, which gave it a really distinct look in the marketplace. The brewers did consider darker bottles in the early years, which would have improved the preservation of the beer's flavor, but ultimately, sales were improved much, much more by the sexy clear bottles that show off all the beer's curves. And of course, if you see a Corona ad featuring the bottled beers, you almost always see a lime along with it. This instantly communicates the refreshing approach the brewers took when making it, and when they paired it with the Find Your Beach slogan and imagery, drinkers around the world could have their own little slice of Mexico. The 1950s, 60s, and 70s were a time of great expansion for Severseria Modelo, acquiring five large breweries across Mexico. This expansion not only allowed them to meet demand for beer domestically, but they also began to export it abroad. In 1976, Corona began crossing the border to the north into the United States. Modelo had previously made entry into the US in the 1930s, but World War II was a major disruption to the supply chain. This reintroduction to the United States was quite the success. By 1996, Corona held the number one import brand in the huge US beer market, and it's held that number one spot ever since, nearly 25 years now. And not only is Corona popular in the United States, but it's also in many countries around the world. The 80s saw Modelo begin shipping to Australia, New Zealand, Hong Kong, Singapore, Germany, Greece, Belgium, and many other European nations. I can personally attest that the island of Bali in Indonesia is well stocked with Corona to pair with their exquisite beaches. All this success for the Grupo Modelo didn't go unnoticed by the world's largest brewing corporation in the world either, and in 2013, AB InBev purchased the Grupo Modelo and all their beer brands, paving the way for even more Coronas heading to Europe and Africa. And although we mostly cover craft beer here on the channel and the ins and outs of that market, Corona is an interesting story from a macro perspective. I can think of only one other beer that so completely encapsulates the unique tastes of a nation, and that's Guinness. And while Corona might not have as much history as the longtime Irish export, Corona has managed to build upon its German roots to become something uniquely Mexican. Corona might not be the greatest representation of beer in terms of quality, but its history leaves no doubt in this drinker's mind that Corona does an excellent job representing Mexico as the cultural crossroads the nation has become today. In my next video dropping soon, we'll discuss the future of Corona and how on earth the brand will be able to continue on despite sharing its name with the first global pandemic in the internet age. What do you think of Corona? Do you find it refreshing or kinda skunky? Do you take yours with or without lime? Let me know down in the comments section below. Once again, this has been Ryan with Beer by the Numbers, and I'll see you for another round in my next video.